Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, the base are bloody slow You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen Put on that lily white and run on to that green White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its loads of nights We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights And when the game is done we'll sing a song and talk it out all night Hey, Come on Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow You are the first team, the last team Hi, it's episode 10, season 5 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast My name's Jav Joining me this week, chairperson of the Johannesburg Spurs Supporters Club, Nikki Merritt. Hello, everyone. And David Fornell from Sussex. Good afternoon. I should have I should have introduced Nikki as Nikki from Johannesburg, but uh, th- th- I'm sure they can listeners can figure that out by, by now. <laughs> we would think so. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Um, right. It's it's um, we've managed to survive collectively. We've we've. The three of us, all our listeners, anybody, um, any Spurs fan out there has, has managed to survive um, the international break. Um, and, and we returned yesterday with a with a victory against West Ham. Um, ladies first. Nikki, um, what did you make of the game? Well, look, um, I think it was a... I wouldn't say it was a tough game, um, but I, I just think that it was good that we obviously ground out the results um we we definitely were better in the first half uh Luis was epic uh, i was really pleased to have him back in in top form he he did some brilliant saves for us and um whether people think it was scrappy or not we got the three points and that's all that matters at the end of the day mm, absolutely and this is at the moment our best um start to a premier league season after nine matches um, so we've already made a little bit of history there. Exactly, exactly. But you know, you'll still get the the doomsdayers going. Oh, oh no! What's going to happen? We're not going to win the league. Blah blah blah. So, anyway, what did you think, David? Um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. But you're <laughs> right. It was uh, it. it... It was a tough second half. We did sink back into our own half a bit. And uh, I think if we'd have got the second, it, it, the floodgates could have opened for sure. Um, I think we'd have got a third and maybe a fourth if we could have got that second. But uh, we did sink down. And then we had to go through the little bit of a concern that we've had of recent times on the important games. For instance, um, Juventus and uh, Man United in the semi-final. We've been 1-0 up. We've sunk back and invited them on. Um, mm. But it shows that West Ham don't have enough about them really um and out of it, up front he is a handful he was always going to be he's a physical uh, handful mm. as well um he's a worry but we dealt with him pretty well we're always going to give chances away um at some stage it's, it's inevitable and that's when you need Larice and and there he was uh, uh, just to uh, uh, clear up if anybody wasn't doing their jobs uh, so yeah, yeah ultimately uh, a fabulous three points and and who would have believed i mean it, it as someone else said, you know, you're sitting there thinking, well, we're not playing very well. This isn't all that at the moment with Spurs. You know, I'm concerned and use heart back to the transfer window. Should we done business? And then you say, oh, hang on a minute. We've got a better points tally than we have in, in any Premier League season mm. so far. So so mm. where's the worry? At the, right at the start of the season, I think it might have been the second podcast. Um, Nicky, um, you, were, you were on back then with myself and Bex when we played Newcastle and... David, you you and I had the pleasure of um, watching the Newcastle game, or, or maybe maybe not, because uh, as I recall, the game was a bit dull, and we were I don't know something. We, we said it on the pod. I remember at the time, Nikki, there was there was when we played Newcastle that that day, we didn't seem to be quite into second gear. We, it was a bit I don't know, a bit disjointed. Um, we got the three points on that occasion. I I thought yeah, I thought first half yes, yesterday was as good as we, we played any at any point um, this season. I thought first half um, uh, some of the movement, the passing um, between Lamella, Winks, Lamella, Mora was was really good. Um, uh, it was a lot quicker. Um, the, the, I I was impressed. I thought, I thought the first half we looked a lot lot better than we have earlier on uh, at other points in the season. Second half, um, 
I sort of expected that from West Ham because they always raise their game against us. They always make it difficult for them. It's their big, you know, their their cup final, and they always want to get one. Well, their fans want to get one over us. Um, I didn't, didn't didn't think they offered much in the first half. Second half, I think they really came at, came out at us. And as you said earlier, David, that, that sort of penned us in a bit, and I, I was a bit nervous towards the end. Um, but we got the three points, and. That that's what matters, and and uh, you know, putting putting aside all this stuff about, um, and I, I know I said it at the outset about um, the best league start for us um, uh, after nine games. Putting all of that to one side, because um, each season is different from one to the next. Um, the 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 bigger picture for me is we are what, fourth from the table. We're joint same number of points as Chelsea. We're only two points off um, both Liverpool and Man City and that's a good place to be come the end of October. We don't want to be dr- um, drift apart from any of those teams. We're, we're there. We're in the mix. Mm. Mm. And and we haven't, we haven't, still haven't hit our best form and, and it's frightening when we do. Um, yeah. What's going to happen then? Precisely. Exactly. Paul and I were discussing that earlier today. That's exactly the point that we were making. You know, if if we're if we're not even playing our best football at the moment, and we're we're able to achieve what we have been achieving when we haven't even been looking great. Once we do hit that form, and everything starts gelling, and and um, and we we get back these players like you know who have been injured, etc. I mean, can you imagine? The sky's the limit. So. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing. I mean, obviously, I think anybody who supports their team is always going to to look at it going, I really, I, I can't wait for us to do better. When this happens and this falls into place, this this might be what the result's going to be. And and that's what we as, as supporters look for. We're always going to look for that silver lining because, because you want your team to excel. You want them to do brilliantly. And, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, the perception is that we haven't had the greatest, um, we haven't performed very well, but where we are at the moment, actually, that's pretty darn good. Mm. So I'm happy with that. Um th- There were quite a few standout performances yesterday. Um, uh, Nicky, I think you mentioned Hugo earlier. If I was going to put you both on the spot and you had to pick a man of the match, um who was your standout player yesterday? Uh, if I come to David first, mm, it's so tempting to say Sissoko because of all the all of the rubbish that's come his way. But I don't think he quite nicks that. I, I, oof, I, I would go. I would go for Lamella. I thought he was our inspiration yesterday. Besides the fact of a, a wonderfully timed run into the box, and I know Sissoko crossed Sissoko crossed it as well. But I would go for Lamella. Mickey. Yeah, I would probably say Hugo because I think, you know, he hasn't really been um, in form lately. There's just been something not quite gelling and it's the Hugo, the old Hugo that we that we know and love, you know, that, that is there to clean up the messes when our defence is a little bit shaky. So he was epic yesterday, I think, my standout performance by far. And a little, 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 little mention for my Sissoko, because <laughs> you all know that I love the underdog. So. Let, no, let's let's give him a big mention. Uh, in fact, um, uh, we had a couple of questions um, on Twitter. Um, firstly, from our own John Steggles. Um, his t- Twitter handle is, is at JW Steggles. He says, "Who was that player with the black wrist bands in the first half? Brilliant performance, and where did he go in the second? Um, and then Kent Goodrich, his Twitter handle is at Kent Goodrich. Misa Sissoko versus West Ham. Joint most take-ons completed, four. Most ball recoveries, 12. Highest uh, pass accuracy, 94.9%. 51 out of 54. Has he turned a corner or was it a one-off? No, it's not well, a one-off. It's not, not a one-off, is it? It's no, not a one-off. No. I agree with you, David. I think I think Sissoko, his confidence hasn't been where it should be, and I think Pochettino has showed quite a bit of faith in him, and he is he is playing a lot more, and I think it's building up his confidence. So yes, he's a little bit shocking, obviously, in front of goal, and and, and that is a confidence thing. But I mean, he's quite athletic, and and yesterday he just he really seemed so on form, and he was he was he had a point to prove, and he was he was just. 
he tried his damnedest, and that's one thing you can't take away from him. And when he tries his damnedest and things fall into place for him, it, he showed he showed glimpses of the Sissoko that we thought we were buying, who came from Newcastle, who who played like that for France. You know, that's what we saw, and I think that's why why we bought him. And if if he can continue to build on that, and Pochettino can improve his confidence, I mean, we could have a really, really, really great player on our hands. I just I feel sorry for him that you know if you're being criticised all the time, obviously you it's going to get to you. It must do. You can't just not think about it it's going to mess your head with your head etc you know i think he was great Mm. and let's we forget that he also um uh uh, assisted um lamella with with his goal i mean he got the ball on the right hand side cut in on his weaker left foot and delivered a good ball for um for lamella absolutely and and the fact that Lamella was there was even better. I mean, it, it just it just all fell into place. It was a beautiful goal to watch. It was great. Just just one thing. It was white white wristbands, not black ones. White I don't wristbands. know what what if John was watching in black and white. <laughs> well, uh, unless it did did strike me, unless John John was re- referring to another player altogether, all, all but I but I presume he but, he, he means means to say no. It, it it must be because he was the only one with any kind of wristbands on. Yeah. Um, Sissoko, I've always felt that he's a sort of player that, in another Spurs era, when we weren't as good as we are, when we when we, when we didn't ha- when we had players not of the caliber of you know the likes of Ericsson and Delhi and Kane and all these stars, Lamella, Son, Mora, etc. Um, you know, I'm talking about. 15 years ago, say, um, early 2000s. At that point, I think Sissoko, if we had a Sissoko in our team then, he would have been a standout player and people and, and he wouldn't be getting the stick that he does now. And I think part of the problem with Sissoko is it's the contrast. He isn't a, he, he isn't a Christian Eriksen. He's not a um, Moussa Dembele or a, 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 a Eric Lamella. Um, he, he doesn't have those qualities. I don't think he's ever professed to, to have those. Um, as you said, Nicky, he, he had a good Euro for France uh, back in 2016. Um, he was a good player for New, Newcastle. He destroyed us um, uh, that that day on, on the final day of the 2015-16 season when mm. when we mm. lost uh, at St James's. Um, so it's, it, it's I always feel with him there's that contrast. You know, he's he is he he he's, he isn't. As good as some of those other players around him, he's a different sort of player. He's a industrious player. He he works hard. He's a good athlete, as you said. Um, we we don't have to, we've got play, we've got some players with pace in the team, um, but I can't think of many that have got strength um, and mm. work hard in the way that and and and, and athletic qualities in, in the way that Sissoko does. He he offers something slightly different, and then like with any player. If he starts to go wrong and he starts to make a few mistakes, and we've seen him, we've seen him when he when he's got when he's been putting goal scoring opportunities. Um, it's fair to say that he, he probably doesn't have the best shooting boots, and um, you know most recently against Barcelona, we we saw this at home where the ball came to him mm. and he and he kicked it and, and rose head, and and it's now become almost um, he's become a figure. Not of hate necessarily by fans, although some of our fans certainly do express that towards him. But but ridicule sometimes, a, a, a bit of a joke, and that's that's going to play on your any sort of player. That's going to play on your confidence. Yet he he's shown he's worked hard and and he's constantly trying, and he's never let that get to him. He's tried his best, and you know other players could have thrown their dummy out or, or just said right this isn't working out I need a loan move I, I I need a move away and demanded a transfer out of the club he's still here and he's just getting on with it um, yeah and that's that's a contrast to some some players we've had in the past that have played this uh, that have played for us um, I think for example of and this is purely just an example that comes comes to my head but I'm sure there are others um, Adebayo for instance we, we, we saw the mm. very best of him early on early on but later on in his first career, there were times when he wasn't showing up uh, for training. He was late arriving from the African um, uh, uh, Cup of Nations and for various other things. And uh, you know, there have been a few others as well. Yet you, you never hear that about Soko, who just gets, gets on and, and does the job. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I, th- I thought he had a really good game yesterday by his standards. And Pochettino even um, in his press conference afterwards acknowledged that and said, "Look, you know, he offers us something different." And I think effectively he was trying to say that he plays Fisoka plays within his li- li- um, limitations, you know, and people shouldn't expect more of him. They shouldn't expect. Uh, you know he's not a Christian Eriksen, um, but he, he he's asked to do a job and, and he gets on and does it. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that that um, yeah, that we're talking about him again. But Pochino was, was asked a question, and, and we we're, we're picking on him when he has a good game. And there were a lot of other good games yesterday. Maybe we should have sort of just glossed past and said, yeah, you know, they all had a good game. Pochino tries to create a team, a team ethos and a team way of playing. He doesn't like standout players. He only um, comments when he gets asked specific questions and he, he's very honourable in ask, answering those questions in some way. He tries to sort of um, damp that sort of uh, question because he knows where it's going. But um, uh, yeah, he, he, as I say before, he, he, he was brought to do a job. He didn't ask to come along and say, I can do what Ericsson can do he didn't ever said that he, he was bought he was watched um at a time when we probably paid more money that was part of the problem we paid more money for him than he was possibly worth it was a felt a, a bit of a panic buy towards the end i mean today's value we probably paid about 50 million for him um mm. and i and, and, and i've no doubt if if you gave pochettino 50 million said there you are one player go out and get him he would buy better a better mm. player, a, 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 a more versatile player. But he was bought, and as you say, he kept his head down, and he's doing a job. The, 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 the silly thing he does, possibly, is be on Twitter, because he, he must get some real vitriol come down that line at him. And, and it's, as you say, Nicky, his confidence has got to be eroded mm. to some degree. And he's fought it very well. I mean, there were times yesterday he looked actually quite confident. He looked as though he was enjoying himself. Yeah. Uh, But second half, it became a bit of a defensive game. So he started to disappear a little bit. It wasn't quite his game. I I think the the fact that he offers that that slight contrast um, is a good thing. You know, he's not... When everybody has a question further in the running order about what our strongest 11 is, and I I, I suspect if we we have everybody fit and available... uh, Well, sorry, I don't even suspect. I know for a fact he wouldn't get in the the line-up. It's questionable whether he'd get on the bench if we have everybody fit and available. Um, and if he did, I would argue he it, it might be more for a tactical reason against a particular opposition because he offers that something different. Um, but it's a squad game, and he has he has a part to play. And when we have injuries, as as we do, um, we need players that can be called upon and, and, and do a job. And 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 he's done that. And uh, credit to him. Um, Nicky, you mentioned Hugo, um, your sort of stand-up player. I, I, yeah, the. Yeah, um, I think he made was it three saves in that game. Um, yeah. Particularly the one at the I think towards the end. Um, I think yeah. was it, it Anatovic went through on goal. I can't remember. And and mm-hmm. he just um, opened up his body and and and, and made a save, save. I remember at that point my heart was just sinking and I assumed that was it. It was going to be one one all and we were going to concede a late goal. Um, and Hugo, uh, he's had his critics recently for for you know for various reasons. It's off fields. Should we say problems? And and then when he returned against Barcelona, he he, he made a mistake early on. Yeah, uh, he, he saved us yesterday and made some good saves. Um, mm-hmm. My play, my the play, play that I was really impressed with was Harry Winks. I thought he was superb once again, on the back of games against Cardiff and second half against Barcelona. I've, I've and also playing for England, I thought he was really really good. Um, always looking to. Always looking for the ball, always looking to drive it forwards, um, full of energy. Um, I, I feel that we're starting to get the winks we had this time last year back, um, and hopefully he can, he can just stay clear of injuries. Well, another player I think who's sort of improving again is Dyer. He's been Dyer mm-hmm. for for a number of games. We he's just he's just not been around, and then. Um, well, for England and half the Spurs, I mean, he's just, he's showing up and he's performing like the old Dyer again. 
and uh, it's been good to watch him. I, 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 you know, I think you could say that for for so many of the players. It depends on the game, it depends on the day, it depends on the mood, it depends on so many factors. And you know, I, I don't even, I won't even pretend to imagine what goes through their minds, especially for a London derby and it's and it's West Ham and it's. Uh, you know, sometimes they're our bogey team, and if, I'm really proud of the boys for grinding out a result. I don't mm-hmm. care how pretty it was, how ugly it was. The fact is, we walked away with the three points. We are where we are in the table. We're still in contention. You know, nobody, like David said earlier, nobody's gotten away from us. Or was it you, Jeff? One of you said, nobody's it gotten away from us. In, in the, okay, <laughs> Jeff. No one's gotten away from us in, in, in the table, and that's and that's what counts at, at the end of the day. You know, we're we're actually not in a bad place, and that is with the, with the injuries that we have. So, you know, get, I'll just give credit to the whole team because they really did put out a squad performance, hmm. as I think Jeff said. Yeah. Um, Lamella, um, if he's showing, um some greater deal of maturity in his performances yeah yes yeah 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 it's he's becoming a, a, a what we all hope is a central focus of creativity and that's uh that's where he's building but he he can also run at players more than ericsson can I mean, ericsson's very very skillful he does dribble and he's very good at it but lamella runs at people and once you start doing that you start to pull defences around, um, and he's doing that. And, and just to say yesterday's goal, what a, a cracking run that was. Simple, but it's timed. Just that little five yards, and you just see him dart through the line. As, as Harry Kane had already made the run into the box, um, mm-hmm. hoping that the, the coming in off of Sissoko's right foot. Sissoko cuts back. Harry Kane gets left in no man's land. He's jogging out, and the and defence then come out leaving Harry there, but there's Lamella from deep coming straight through the ranks and a lovely little glancing header. Absolutely superb goal mm-hmm. this type. I really enjoyed that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's looking mm-hmm. great, isn't he? And as we keep saying, yeah, he's like the new signing. Can I go back to Dyer, please? Um, yeah. Dyer, yeah, Dyer's tackle. I know everybody's talked about it, but I'm still going to mention it anyway. His tackle on Ramos. I mean, that was a thing of beauty uh, a midweek mm. against Spain. It really was. It was a fantastic t- tackle i don't think he deserved a yellow but hey it was worth a yellow and it set the mood of the game and i thought great now bring that back to spurs we'll have a little bit of yeah. that yeah dyer um as you, as you said earlier nicky he, he's, he's come under some criticism recently and, and that's fine um that's he hasn't been for whatever reason he hasn't been performing um at his very best, but I mean, some Spurs fans have, have, have written written him him off um, and suggested that you know perhaps it's time for an upgrade. Um, I you know I think that Eric Dyer that we saw in 2015-16 was a, was a superb player. Um, all players, particularly young players, they they always will have a slump in form. That doesn't mean to say that that uh, uh, they can't push on and I'm sure um, uh, Dyer's still a young man he'll, he'll, he'll mature and, and, and develop and, and will push on and I think for me the fact that he's so versatile he can play in different positions I mean, for me he's he's an integral part of our squad um, and you know he's one that I wouldn't want to see us sell at any point even if he's ha- having a bad patch which which, which happens from, from, from time to time um, on, on Lamella um, you know, aside, aside from the fact that he scored what however many goals he scored this season now for us, um, and his assist, and you also got to go back to the end of last season. Um, people forget against Leicester. I think he scored a couple there, so mm. it, it carried that form towards the end of last season into this. Um, his overall influence, he, 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 even if he didn't score those goals, there's. And I remember the the, the Lamella that we signed um, in the first few years. He used to frustrate frustrate me. Now a lot of fans give him stick because they say, "Oh, well, he's injured half." Well, he's injured. He's injured. That's not his problem. That's that's just unfortunate. But the, what what used to really frustrate me about Lamella was early on. He used to be this sort of headless chicken, chicken running running around and running into a cul de sac often, and 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 now there's a he's just got more sense of calmness 
um, confidence, um, even a sense of um, authority, um, not just in the way that he conducts himself on the field and the way he plays. And he's still got that aggression and that bite. But even when you look at interviews, um, I think he just seems to be a lot more happy and settled. Um, and I think that's like with, you know, with anything in life, in any walk of life, if you're happy... If you're happy as a person, you're going to be happy in your job and vice versa. And I think that the, he's in a good place from what I can see. And, I like... And, mm. I was just saying, and, and, and we're, and we're re- reaping those benefits, clearly. Absolutely. I, I, I think I like to think of it as the Pochettino effect. Because that's the effect that Pochettino has on these players, you know. He, he takes them, and probably even more somebody like Lamela, I suppose, being Argentinian as well. You know, boy with so much talent. Um, but then to be, to be able to take him and, and just focus on, on a few of his, his skills and hone in on them and, and to, to get the player that we're getting right now, where, yeah, he is very creative. Yes, he's not, a, he's not an Ericsson, but he does cause problems for, other, for the opposition on the pitch, and that's what we want at the end of the day. We want somebody who, like David says, is going to run towards the opposition, you know, cause problems for them, make, make the defence go, oh, what's happening? Where did he go? What are we doing? You know, because at the moment, and I think, but this is just my perception that that because they're they're focusing so much on Harry, and and the the the, team, the defense, the opposition, are focusing so much on Harry that with them doing that, it allows the other players, Spurs players, to come out and shine. So so Harry's not getting the opportunity to to shine like he normally would because I think the opposition has sort of cottoned on and they're like, just stop Harry from scoring. Um, but then that opens them up for, for the other players to to come in and score, like with yesterday, what happened yesterday with um, Sissoko and, uh, and Lamella. Mm. Did either of you see um, after the after the um, the game? Pochettino was was out in his press conference, uh, right towards the end. A journalist asked him that um, when Liverpool sort of win ugly, they get you know they get applauded for. Oh, well, Liverpool didn't play well, but but they managed to get a result. But when Spurs do that, you don't get the credit that you deserve. And then after a little bit of. Um, I think Pochettino not understanding the question and then yes. speaking to Hazus Perez. He turned around and his reaction just, it was just, well, you know, I, I don't care. I, I, I don't care about that. And and I felt so, because particularly for me, it always gets under my skin when I hear pundits not giving us the credit that we deserve and and, 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 and heaping praise on, on you know, the likes of Liverpool and et cetera. Uh, and I and I find it very difficult, and I, I and I try to be that one who's uh, it doesn't affect me. It does affect me. I I, I don't like it because I think it's disrespectful. But I just love the fact that he just seemed completely blasé to it, and he just said, "Yeah, don't care really about that." Um, says a lot for the man. It does. And and his focus. Yeah, he's not too. And I mean this in the in, with the biggest respect. It's not about how they play or their results or whatever, or whether or not the press give us the the credit that that we do. At the end of the day, we just worry about ourselves. You know, the the press are always going to be blowing smoke up Manchester City and Arsenal and United and Liverpool's arse. Let them do it by all means. Go. I mean, the the amount of focus that that Mourinho has been having. It's not Man United. It's Mourinho United. I mean, my God, that man is just like hogging the press. And what does it sell stories? Is that what it's about? I just don't get it. So I, I'm happy for us. And I say, I think we say this every single season. I'm happy for us to fly under the radar, let them think that we're playing shit. You know what? Let us play shit. We're getting the results. So before you know it, we're going to sneak up behind you. And then what are you going to do? Oh, wh- when did this happen? When did, when did, how did this happen? Because they're too busy focusing on other people and other teams and and uh, how they win. So I think maybe that's Pochettino's thinking. It's like, whatever, you know, I'm not here to get into a debate about what people think about us or whether they give us credit. That's not why I'm here. Mm-hmm. 
He's he, he plays the press card very well, I think. He doesn't get into um, tricky situations with them. And I think he uses his, his, the English barrier as a bit of a defense mechanism. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, he's, very, right. he's very clever. Mm, he's quite interesting because they are focusing on particularly at the moment man city liverpool and chelsea simply because they haven't lost a game um and we've lost two but interestingly in previous seasons we keep drawing and certainly to start off with their first game is notoriously a draw and tends to be a 1-1 but this season so far we haven't drawn a game in the premier league mm-hmm. and it's actually put us in a much better position strangely enough it's just the goals we're scoring a little bit um down uh, at the moment i'd like to, to see that a little bit more but uh, so mm-hmm. and i agree i totally agree agree with you Nicky I mean uh, uh, if they're going to concentrate on those three and say look they haven't lost a goal which by uh, lost a game rather by suggestion means that they're flying and they're away from us but as we know we're just two points we're just two points behind them all three could lose and they pick up the Sunday papers and oh hang on a minute what's happened there so yeah of all the seasons of all the seasons I, you know, I'm starting to wonder because here we are a quarter of the way in the season and we're two points off the lead mm. and right in the mix with everyone and it's the least. This is a season I would least expect us to really challenge for the Premier League. I, I, I'm just hoping that, that we will maintain and, and keep in the top four. But now I'm starting to recalibrate and looking at it, thinking, you know what? If these these other boys suddenly hit a, a bad patch, and hopefully we then find our form, and, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain we're buying in January. Um, I think they've been thinly veiled threats if you like, from Pochettino, that he will spend in January. He will strengthen the squad. He has to. And people have to be, as he says, be brave. Um, maybe we'll see us come out into the new year um, with a renewed vigour. It should uh, give the other players a, a bit of a jolt as well. So who knows? This could be, you know, it could, bizarrely, and as, as you say, Nicky, you know, suddenly they look, look, at, look at the table and everybody picks a paper up and think, oh, crikey, whatever happened there? Mm. How did how did mm. that happen? How did that happen? We just got to stay in the mix. Well, I, yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I mean, we'll we'll look at the next league fixture um, in the second half of the pod. Um, but I think certainly the the next few fixtures over the next month, from the end of October to the start of December, are going to be crucial because that's normally the period of time we have a we tend to have a slowish start the last few seasons, and then we've had a, definitely the last couple of seasons because of injuries. Um, which we seem to be plagued with, we have this period ran about now-ish where we drop a lot of points, where we, we lose games or, 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 or we drew, draw too many. And then we suddenly hit form again and hit a run in, in December. So I think the next... Um, we're in really good position. We, we haven't gone adrift of um, the league leaders. It's a very con- it's an interesting table, a very congested field at the moment. Um, if we can... I said, if I think, a few weeks ago um, before we played... Before Liverpool played Chelsea and Man City, and I, I think we were maybe six points behind at that point, and I said we can potentially we could get, be in a situation going into the international break where, where we'll only be two points behind, and that's exactly where we, where we were before the international break, and that's where where we are now, and and that's good, and I think we need to be there or thereabouts and and keep it at that gap or or, or even overtake. Um, the next month before we hit December because the run of fixtures we've got over December um, on paper December, January January, on paper they are winnable games and we historically do really well in that period of time there are a lot of fixtures a lot of points to be won a lot of points to be dropped and some of our rivals might might do that Um, I think one difference if you look look around the table this season compared to last season is um, last season City were miles ahead and this season, I don't think that they're getting the respect that they fully deserve. Everybody's talking about Liverpool, Liverpool and City. Chelsea are now getting a bit, bit of attention. I think if 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 we're going to win the league, big if, if we're going to do that, we've got to finish above Man City. Um, finish above Man City. Um, I know you've got to finish above all, oh, sorry, that's a stupid thing to say. You've got to finish above all 19 teams to win the league, but but finish above City and I think we'll, we'll, we'll win the league because I think that they are still the team to catch. I think they're still the best team. And what this season perhaps masks is the fact that um, 
last season they were way ahead, but there was there was a reason why they were um, way ahead. One, um, the teams around around them who were chasing them had dropped a few points by this point, so the gap was already starting to widen. Um, that hasn't proved to be the case this year. Liverpool, um, Chelsea, ourselves, um, Arsenal, who play on Monday. Um, generally haven't dropped too many points so we're all not too far behind um and also um they've this point last year they only drew one match and hadn't lost any this year they've drawn two yeah. that's only a two point uh, difference that's not too bad that, you know so it, it, but but yet because of that and because of the fact that everybody else hasn't done hasn't dropped too many points the gap isn't as big um which is great from our point of view but i would still suggest that they are you only have to look at their performance yesterday, um, scoring five against Burnley. They are on another planet, um, and uh, I really think they're the, they're, they're the team to catch. But you know, we continue as we are. If we if we stay within touching distance of of, of them and Liverpool and and, and Chelsea, then um, that's in a good position going into the um, busy Christmas period. Um, right, second half of the podcast, um, we will look. Um, at our next opponent, who happens to be Man City, um, play the week tomorrow. Um, we'll look at our game in the middle of the week against PSV. Um, we'll take a couple of listen- listeners, a couple of questions from listeners, even. Um, but before we do, here is Bex with this week's Spurs ladies update. Hiya, it's Bex. Busy couple of weeks for the Spurs ladies, where there was no update last week, which is a shame, really. Um, anyway, but it was international break, so no podcast. So last weekend, the girls played down at bizarrely the Dripping Pan Stadium. I'd love to know the origin of that name, but I'm not actually going to go and find out. Anyway, uh, when they beat Lewis FC 3-1. So they went a goal behind um, and then Bianca Baptiste pulled it back two minutes later and equalised. And then Rihanna Dean got two. That took the girls to second in the table and including uh, Spurs saving Spurs keeper Chloe Morgan saving a penalty. This weekend, the girls have played today, Sunday they played at Chesson, they played Millwall Lionesses. It was obviously quite a quiet game, what with just the eight goals being scored by Spurs, which puts them top of the table. Eight. I mean, eight got it really? So, um, highlights for that were Rihanna Dean got a hat-trick um, and Angela Addison got two, which is all very nice. So, we are indeed top of the league and that looks lovely. Their next game is against Aston Villa and that's next Sunday the 28th of October at 1 o'clock and that's at Chessant. Um, that is a league match so hopefully, and if United ladies, because that's not a con at all, if um, United ladies don't manage to win then we will stay top which would be lovely. So in some other news around the team, Karen Hills was named the uh, inaugural FA Women's Championship Manager of the Month, which I think was really good. Fantastic for her. Um, she's quite pleased. Uh, and that was because we had three home wins, or sorry, three wins at the first start of the, at the start of the season, which is really, really good. Lovely for the whole team as well. And then we had five of our girls called up for international duty. Uh, Megan Wynn and Jessie Green were included with the um, Welsh team. Anna Philby was called up but uh, had to pull out due to injury. Rihanna Dean, um, who has clearly been doing very well, was uh, invited to join up with the England under-21s. Jessica Nows has just gone back to the under-19, England under-19s. So it's been really good. Lots of happening in the world of Spurs ladies. Give them a follow on social media. Any questions, I am on Twitter at Bunches Bex. Cheers, thanks, bye-bye. Welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur family podcast. Thank you, Bex. Right, um... Man City next, um, and we've got them a week tomorrow. Um, I'm really concerned about this game um, because um, there are two teams that I've seen live in the flesh that I think are just on another planet. One of them um, was whatever it was ten days ago, um, uh, Barcelona, who I think are the best team that I've ever seen in the flesh. I think they're just superb, and, and it was just. It was a joy to watch them, but it was also painful because it was our team on the receiving end. Um, and Messi, what a player. But domestically, um, uh, the one team over the last few years that I've been really impressed with have been Man City. Um, the way they played us off the park last season, home and away, um, just superb. And this is going to be a really, really, really tough game. Um, 
we're going to have to be at our very best. I would, if I was going to make a prediction, I would happily take a draw. I would happily take a one-all draw. Look, Dev, I've said it. I think I sound like a broken record because I probably say it every time we do the potch. But anybody can beat anybody on their day. Did you say do the potch? And... Have you got potch on your mind? <laughs> oh, God. Did I say that? Did I you say did. potch? You did. <laughs> oh, my word. Clearly, I want to do potch. Sorry, Annette. <laughs> Step up, move up, move out. Sorry, when I do the pod, oh, God. Sorry, now I've just lost my train of thought because I'm thinking about doing pot. <sighs> Anyone can beat anybody. They can. Anybody can beat anybody on their day. And, you know, we, we've got Ericsson coming back from injury and Billy coming back from injury. And if, if it just clicks for us, I mean, you know, yeah. So they've drawn to. What's to stop us from, from hitting a run of form and beating them? You know, obviously, um, a lot of people will probably be listening to this and going, yeah, whatever. But I'm all is a glass half full person and especially when it's wine and so therefore i i actually think we could beat them and i think i think we could probably do if it's not a one nil victory probably two one you know or I'd, I'd like to think that Luis can show up and and be superb in in goal again and, and just uh, save us and keep a clean sheet so i, I i'm going to say that i i reckon we could we could beat them Obviously, okay. Jeff, yeah, I haven't watched them live. but and, and yes, respect your opponent, but let's not give them too much respect, for goodness sake. Let's just, can we show up and actually just show people what Spurs are made of? Because we've got it in us. We do have it in our locker. We've done it before. We can do it again. If the game ended in a draw, would you, would you be happy with that outcome? Yeah, obviously. I would take a winner or a draw over a loss any day because... Against a team like Man City, yes, a draw is a victory because at least they've dropped two points. But I just think that that we could have it in us, and and they might they might underestimate us, especially with us having players coming back from injury. You know, we could we could have a, a renewed sort of strength going. And my my only concern, I would say, is probably down the left side. I think we're a little bit weak there with with Danny being out, with Fatongan being out. If anything happened to, to Davies, we're a bit screwed. Mm. We're very thin there. That's my only concern. David, um, how do you see the City game? I, I'm with you uh, in as much as I, I, you know, I'm very concerned. Oh, you know, this game City. They are playing with such verve, such vigour, such confidence. It's going to be difficult. But two seasons ago... We- we tore them to pieces when I thought then it was going to be difficult. We beat them 2-0 and uh, I think Lamella missed a penalty, if I remember rightly. Yeah, um, but a different uh, a, a if, city, if, t- city team with, with a few ageing players, Zabaleta, various others. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't put that much on them. It was more to do with the goalkeeper that day. We pressed them. Celtic had uh, drawn with them midweek in the Champions League um, and with a high press and we looked at a high press. They are better now at dealing with high press and in fact teams to start to drop off them again a bit more because if you high press and don't make it they bypass you you're left um stranded at the back uh, outnumbered so it's it's a it's a ploy that's it works looks lovely when it works but can strip your bear if you're not careful um i suspect we won't play too much high press with them i th- think we'll that's a danger if you play half a press that's when you get done and we either do it fully or we we, we step off it'll be interesting to see which one he plays um I, I'm with Nicky. I'd take a draw all day long on this one, mm-hmm. taking two points off them. At this stage of the season, that keeps us right in the mix. No doubt about it. Um, Liverpool, I'm sure, will drop points, as Chelsea will. So it will, will keep us in there. Um, but, yeah, I, I am concerned. They are, they are a cracking side, but for sure. Actually, Jason Cundy the other day, I was listening to him on the radio um, for what he is. He was very, uh, very complimentary about us. He said that this Spurs side can beat anyone in the world. He said, on their day. Yeah, he said if they're playing, we can beat, and, and he's right. He also said Harry Kane was the best striker in the world, mm. and I wouldn't disagree with that either. <laughs> I, I, I think you know how we talk about um, Spurs going under the radar. I actually, I genuinely think City are going under the radar. I don't think they're getting the plaudits they they deserve. 
um, and 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 I think they they are dangerous. They're really dangerous. But that's but that's only because everybody's blowing smoke up Liverpool's yep. ass at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, that's that's it's because all the focus is there, and obviously on Mourinho and his little you know shit fits that he's having at, <laughs> yeah. at Man United at the moment. Yeah. That's the only reason they're not getting the press. Normally they they would be getting all the press. So, you know, I, yeah, they they they're a good side. I'm not taking that away from them, but do we have it in us to beat them? All day long. Will we beat them next week? I cert- certainly bloody well hope so. Mm. <laughs> well, what I what I think is we, we definitely got you know not just because of the the points difference um, that the, there's a reason why the points difference is, is is like that. You've got good good teams and they're, they're not dropping points, uh, including ourselves and Chelsea. Um, I didn't expect them to be where they are this season, and and they are. I think they could be a real dark horse. So for us to win. For us to go and dare I say it, win the league, I keep saying it, um, it's going to be very difficult. But that's no bad thing. Imagine, just, imagine, just imagine if we actually won the league and we did it this season. Not the season we were chasing Leicester when supposedly um, it was a weaker league and, and all the other big, the supposedly big clubs were in transition. Imagine if we did it even even the, the year after when, when Chelsea won it and we were chasing them. Um, you know, some of those clubs were still in transitional states. United, City. Imagine if we actually did it this season and we finished above Man City, Liverpool, and Chelsea. That would be quite some achievement. Um, I, 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 you know, that it's it's yeah. going to be it's going to be really tough. Um, but we're there at the moment, and and I think that um, you saw this a few weeks ago. Liverpool when they play Chelsea and. Um, uh, Man City. They didn't win it. Okay, they didn't win it either of those games. They did drop points. So that we, you know, we, we we gained four points on them because of their two two draws. But they still drew those games. City drew against Liverpool. Liverpool drew against City. Um, and I think that you know, sometimes we we go into these games, you know, thinking that winning it is the be all and 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 end all. But I actually think in the games against the top six, it can it's so difficult to call. It can go either way. And if we if we get if we win those games, fantastic. But if we actually come away with a draw, I think that's perfectly credible. It means we've got a point as opposed to none, and um, the team that we've played uh, 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 haven't gained any ground on us. And I, and I think the league the league will come down to how consistent the the um, uh, you are against the weaker teams. And I, and I think, touch wood, at the moment, we have, not just this season, but previous seasons, we have a very good record against some of the weaker teams. We don't drop tend to drop points that often. Um, Liverpool, in the past, last season, for example, have. So, you know, if we continue it as, our, as we are, but just be a little bit more, maybe, um, tactically aware against some of these teams. But David, you mentioned the, the trying to um, press City. I, I You know, I, th- I think that... Uh, that yeah, that worked a couple of seasons ago, but but they're so much better at dealing with yeah. the high press. And I think yeah. maybe in some of those games, if we perhaps a little bit more tactically astute and 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 yeah, do sit back sometimes, do invite the pressure, and then try to hit teams on the break, um, then then we can get something um, rather than go hell for le- le- leather and, and always assume that that's gonna that's yeah. that's that's the right thing to do. Um, uh, now before Man City, we've got PSV on Wednesday in the Champions League. Um, uh, we are we've got zero points. They've got zero points after two games. Um, Inter and Barcelona have got maximum points after two matches. They obviously pl- play each other the same night, and they'll play each other um, a couple of weeks le- later. So we've got back to back. That means we've got back to back games against PSV. Um, it's away from home. Um, I was looking at the, the form table. I think they are top of the. Dutch league and they've won all nine matches and um, only conceded three goals all season. Now, obviously, it, the, the Dutch league is a is generally a weaker league, so it's not too difficult for a team like PSV or Ajax to find or to excel in that way. Um, are either of you hopeful, optimistic that we can get something? Um, I'm not. I'm fairly. For me, the priority is 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 the is the league, and I think we're going to have a very difficult, not an impossible, but I think we're going to have a difficult job trying to qualify out of the group, having lost our first two games. 
We had a little crumb of comfort this weekend. Messi broke his arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. But he'll be back, unfortunately, I think, by, by the time we play them. Yeah, but he might be a bit um, bit careful with it when he mm. gets battered, um, which Dyer would probably look for him, I suspect, if he'd only just come back. <laughs> yes, Eindhoven are flying in the, in the Dutch league. As you say, uh, 36 goals for, three against. I mean, it's, it's quite something, but I, I yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. But I, I, I think we'll go out there and win. We have to. Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't think we do anything do. else. We, we, we will go out there and win. And I think this, the game yesterday was was a good um, hors d'oeuvres for it. I think the main course will be on Wednesday, and I think we will play well. And I think that's, I think it was good management by Pochettino. You know, he didn't bring Ericsson back straight into the starting eleven, and I think he was keeping him just nicely for Wednesday. So we got the creativity back, and I think Dembele will start start on Wednesday as well mm. I think the, mm. the game will chuck is the following Wednesday I say chuck but I mean that's the game where he doesn't chuck any games but that's where he will give the opportunity to a lot of fringe players in the West Ham League Cup game and I and I won't beat Pochettino or Spurs up if it doesn't work if we, mm. we drop out out of that game management yeah yeah um I was going to talk about the new stadium, but I'm um, quite depressed talking about the new stadium because there isn't really much happening with it. Um, so uh, a few weeks ago, I heard directly um, from somebody very senior at Spurs that the club shop would open on on Saturday. Um, and in all honesty, it was scheduled to open on Saturday, but there were some delays, some teething problems, um, which have which have meant that it didn't it didn't open. Um, I think it's now they're talking about that it's going to it's going to open in the middle of the week on Tuesday. Um, as for the when the first game at White Hart, uh, sorry, at the, at the new stadium will be, um, uh, I'd, I've, I've speculated and speculated and speculated some more, and I, I don't I really don't know. I think it's looking possibly like United. Um, and and that's fine. It's great when it when it does open. It's you know it's, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. We're, we're, we're edging closer towards it. But um, the thought of playing more games at Wembley, particularly in December when we've got lots of home games, we've got Southampton, Burnley, uh, I think Wolves and Bournemouth. We've got four four domestic league games in December. Um, we might even have a fifth if we if we if we progress past West Ham in the in the League Cup. The thought of playing that many games in that month at Wembley is is depressing. So, um, yeah. Look, it's construction. Unfortunately, it's it's what it is. I mean, I, I although I've never known construction work to be this delayed, um, which is which is disappointing. I think for for everybody, not just the the fans. It must be for the players, for the staff, for the, um, you know Pochettino for for everybody. Um, so, but like you say, Jeff, I mean, the sooner it does open, the better for everybody. And um, I, I, the last report I heard was it might be fifteenth or middle of December or something like that. Um, but I think as soon as they do it, you know, so that the boys can get settled for the second half of the season, um, it needs to happen. But like really really soon but at the same token we have made Wembley our home and as much as you don't like traveling there mm. at least we do have the upper hand because at least we know what we're doing when we play there yeah we do know the pitch so that's also in our favor so I don't know I don't know do you think the boys would have a little extra spring in their step uh, playing playing at the new stadium Versus Wembley, definitely. Will, will will there be an advantage? Yes, definitely. Do you think? It, you think so? Why do you say that? It just does. I mean, you're in a new stadium. The whole fans are lifting the whole place up. It's wonderful. I do. I'm going to go back to my playing days and I remember our club when we first got floodlights and we played midweek and some a lot of our league games and it it just lifted us and we were unbeaten there for two years under the floodlights. 
um, it, it just makes you know that difference it's that little bit of difference that whole stadium atmosphere I, I, and the players will in, you won't need to instill it in the players particularly the first game got to win and I, I think it will raise their game I, I really do that's one of the things I, I think next season if we get a couple of signings and get in that new stadium um, just on the back of that I saw something in the paper today that said that Spurs have been forced to extend the stadium loan to 500 million from 400 whether again this is all speculation by the paper because lower down that they say that our capacity is 61,500. Well, of course, as we know, it's 62,062. So it's silly little mm. things like that. Um, but they're t- talking about it being possibly not ready until the, the new year and, and possibly even the springtime. Well, I, I don't see that, but uh, I don't think the club really know at the moment. Still, um, it's driving me up the wall. That and Brexit at the moment. I'm, I'm considering taking up smoke. <laughs> I'm considering taking up smoking, to be honest. <laughs> well. It's getting so bad, all this. No, nope. um, I, I, but it, it is costing. It, Lee, you, you've got to imagine it's costing Levy, and he doesn't like it. Levy, we know Levy won't like that. It's costing him. I, I know he'll he'll be punishing the companies that have delayed it, whoever that might be, um, financially. Uh, although not everything, but some of the costs will still unfortunately come down to Spurs, I'm guessing. Um, so he'll want to get in there as soon as possible. But looking at it, you know, we're watching these. Uh, um, videos daily um, and the, cl- the ground is looking very close in a lot of things I know it doesn't tell us what the wiring's doing there are thousands of miles of wiring in there and a lot of it of course has been covered up that's faulty yeah. so there's probably a bit of chiseling going on and pulling the wiring out so there's a lot of work to be done still I'm sure but I'd be I'd still be surprised if it is next year but Manchester United is going to be the likely one if it is well um, I mean all those things like, like the grass the fact they're laying the, the the pitch and um that they finally start started to send out um the members packs for the season ticket holders with their season ticket with, with their yes. cards um the fact they're doing that now would suggest that it, something's going to happen very fairly soon you know and because you know, grass doesn't take that long to to, to lay and bed etc it takes obviously some time but you're not going to do that for example if it's still three months or two months or what well, well, what are we? Uh, October, November, December, January. Yeah, you don't want to do it. It's like two or three months away. Um, uh, the, the, the fact they're doing that now suggests that um, we, we we've moved on and, and hopefully it should be ready soon. The, my only concern is I heard from a reliable source recently that the test games um, and this hasn't been announced, but mm. the likelihood is they will be in the beginning of December. And if at the beginning of December, it makes that Burnley game on the fifteenth bit of a tight fit mm. whether that would be the first game it would probably then push it towards um, I, 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 I don't United. agree actually I don't agree I think if, the, if I mean clearly if the tests fail then it won't be but if mm-hmm. the tests pass what else we've got to do because I've had more time to finish it off and it, if by the time it comes to testing I'm sure they won't be far away from our actually finished when we go to that first game other than a few pictures being put up I, I, I don't think we'd be very far away yeah. we, that September game clearly there were going to be a lot of stuff that wasn't going to be ready and it wouldn't have surprised me if there were certain parts of the stadium even yeah. um, that, that fans weren't have been allowed to in certain sections at yeah. that stage but now I think most of it will be so I don't know but we're all guessing that's the trouble the club keep that's making us thing. guess Absolutely. Just, just imagine if we won the league um, so that's the third time I've said it in the pod. If, you, if I keep <laughs> saying it, it's going to happen. Um, just imagine we did it in the season when we played at Wembley, Milton Keynes, and the new stadium. That would drive drive everybody mad. Yeah. Um, that, that would give me quite a great deal of pleasure. Um, right, uh, two two questions to finish off the pod with. Firstly, in some senses we, we've we've touched upon this but maybe it's why James Parr. Why does it feel like our season is rubbish yet it's our best start? It, yes, it, yeah, yes, yet yeah, it's our best ever start to the Premier League. Far now, away, obviously, obviously, he's referring, re- referring to p- performances which have been perhaps a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, they have been underwhelming, but it's exactly what we said earlier. If if this is what we we perceive to be a poor start, which because they have been underwhelming, can you just imagine once everybody's fit and back from injury and and we have got everybody firing again. I mean, we could be 
formidable and 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 other pe- other teams are going to fear us so you know i i think it's incredible actually but i suppose i suppose it's people i mean like like at joburg spurs and, and i'm sure it is the same when you guys go to the stadium there is nothing more i don't know um fulfilling than celebrating a goal i mean it is it is incredible. Everybody's cheering and screaming and and clapping and shouting and singing and celebrating and and that feeling. If you could bottle it and sell it, I think you could make a lot of money because it is just so fantastic. And and for me, when we have match day socials and it's very sort of underwhelming performance and we maybe only scored one goal or we didn't score a goal or whatever the case is, I just it, it's really hard because, I, 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 especially if there's new people that have come for the first time, I just, I just want to say to them, you've got to come back because, because when we sco- score more goals, this place erupts and and you want to experience that because it is amazing. But um, yeah, so that's probably maybe why because the underwhelming performances, but we're grinding out the results and, and if you think back, actually. Um, it's kind of what Leicester did too, hey? They 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 weren't they weren't going wild. They weren't having these brilliant performances, but they were getting the result. Okay, often because the referee um, was on their books and um, <laughs> threw the game their way. But <laughs> you know, they got the results, whether it was pretty or not. They got the results. So. Yeah, I mean. Even even the, the season before Leicester, uh, when Chelsea won um, the league under yeah, yeah. under Mourinho in his second spell, if you, if you recall, they started the season really really well, um, and they were flying. And then they played us on on, on New Year's Day, and we gave we gave them a spanking, right? That, yes. but, yeah, and five three, five three, yeah. And um, after that, they 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 went from being, uh, you know. A, 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 Dare I say a, an attacking side, which is probably a little bit of a paradox if you're talking about a Mourinho team, to to more to reverting to type and being more of exactly that a Mourinho team and grinding out results. Um, could you imagine if this season we got off to a flyer, a flyer and we started playing really well and flowing and attacking football, and then suddenly we we burnt out in the second half of the season and we finished somewhere down the table, um, not necessarily outside the top four, but let's just say fourth. Um, yeah, Liverpool. They start the season brightly, and everybody's talking about them. Um, the last few games, they've. I think they they went four in all competitions. I think they went four games without a victory. They won yesterday. They weren't particularly. They didn't play particularly well. So, um, you know, there's something for, to be said for doing it the other way. Um, starting the season, gr- grinding out results, and then and then hitting top, top gear later on. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's quite interesting. The last two seasons, um, we've uh, uh, been sort of suggested that we've been a- overperforming, if you like, of uh, of what they expected. Now this season, suddenly we're underperforming, and <laughs> we're doing better. <laughs> so Whoa. I'll take I'll take it. Well, yeah. have been, uh, the, suggestion, the suggestion against the others. This is it. We're being compared. You know, they're doing really well. What a good side! I hardly sp- spin anything. You know, that in fact, I think at one stage it was five million in profit over the last four years uh, of our transfer dealing so we're outperforming where we should be and then this season suddenly we're underperforming but we're uh, we're uh, ahead of where we were last year a quarter of the way into the season yeah. so i'll take it i'm happy i, I see what other people are seeing it's not uh, it, it's it, it's not um, hitting top gear by any means so at least we've still got that to come no absolutely and 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 okay let, let's look at the, the the why i would say the why is probably down to the world cup we have so many players both with england and belgium uh france even um p- particularly those teams obviously we had we had denmark and and uh south korea and, and colombia involved as well uh, but particularly those teams getting to la- lots of players getting to la- latter st- stages those players haven't really had much of a rest um if i was going to criticize pochettino um Man City, I think, get, and even Chelsea rested some of those players. I've got a rest, um, and they didn't. Some of their players didn't play in the first few Premier League matches. Um, we haven't really rested them. Although that being said, um, they have different. I know they had different programs. For example, Trippier 
Um, I, he didn't start actually against against New, New, Newcastle, um, but then he started in, in, in the next game against Fulham, and, and he's had a different sort of training program. Um, yeah, perhaps Kane, we could have rested rested earlier. There's an argument for that, but I think that certainly contributes to um, the way we've played, and and also the last few seasons of the Pochettino, we've we've always had a slow start. We've all we've always drawn a few games to, too many, which, as you said right at the outset. David, we haven't drawn any this season. We, we've we've won most of them, bar two. Mm, mm. Um, so we always do this, and we always tend to then hit form um, around about Christmas 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 time. Um, the, the 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 difference this season is we've played like we've played previously, or maybe slightly worse. At, at, however many nine games in the season, but we've we've picked up more points, um, and that's that's a good place to be. So. Um, I think we'll only push on from here. Um, final question, um, Annette Smith. Do we have a best 11? Um, she goes on to say, I think we need a consistent 11 to start all the time to gel, but I don't think we have one. Thoughts? Who wants to go first? Fire away, Nikki. Okay, well, look. Um, you're always going to have injuries, and... Um, I don't know. Do you always want to be relying on the same eleven? Because when you've got the same eleven playing, you you become predictable, in my mm. opinion, and 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 people kind of know what to expect from you. But when you when you're swapping players out and you you're rotating the team, you don't really know what you're going to get, or hopefully the opposition don't really know what they're going to come up against, or or what the tactic is going to be. So, you know, I think I think the fact that we are able to rotate, and yes, even if it hasn't been pretty, we are getting the results. So, bearing in mind that all those things that you said, Jab, about about the World Cup and perhaps people being tired and not being rested, we've had injuries. We're actually doing pretty good. So, I, I wouldn't, in my opinion, I wouldn't say we need to have a starting eleven that is what we want to play every single game because I just think it makes us predictable. I don't know. Yeah, yeah the Thanks. game, the yeah. games, the games changed out of all recognition from years ago. Uh, substitutions weren't, didn't come in until 1967. Um, and Liverpool famously won the league title with using no more than 15 players. So they didn't switch. So there, there could be a, a psychology there saying, yep, yeah, settled 11. Bill Shank to have a settled 11. Knew they played. And you no, know you knew how they played. They were still too good for you. That's not the game today. Uh-huh. The game is awash with money. Big squads. That's what Chelsea and Man City have up, upon us, really. A bigger squad. Uh, and ones players that are so highly paid, they're willing to warm the bench. That's the difference. Um, and we're trying to do that on a little bit of a budget. And you're absolutely right, Nicky. Uh, well, that's what Pochettino does. He doesn't always do it to rest players. Um, sometimes he does it tactically. And, and as I say, you don't want to give the opposition too much knowledge. You want, they have the, I think they have team sheets in. I think it's, a, we have them an hour ahead, the team. And I think they have them an hour and a half ahead. That's correct. Uh, when yeah. they get handed in. Yep. Um, and they have an hour and a half. And then they've got to work their tactics out when they see the team come out, which is not, not a lot. You're not, going on the training pitch so you're trying to throw the mix it so something into the mix and, and and have them confused hopefully uh so um the only time you're going to know with we got a, a settled or, or a best 11 should we say is when a, a semi-final or a cup final come along then you'll probably know and if all are fit you'll know who pochettino thinks is probably the, the best side mm. Mm. i think that we've been blighted by injury problems and that's probably why we haven't been able to play our best 11 if if you rewind back to the 2015-16 season when we were chasing Leicester um, I think at one point in the season you could pretty much guess predict the strongest 11 if everybody was fit and available and generally that season we were really lucky with, with, with injuries um, Kane didn't pick up any injuries um, the only injury that I, as I recall significant injury we had that season was Vertonghen was out from January to beginning of April um, and, and then returned um, and when he was out Vimmer came in it was just a straight 
straight swap left side of the defender for another. Um, but you could pretty much that season predict the team, and it was it was Lloris in goal and uh, Alvaro and Vertonghen, and the fullbacks were Walker and Rose, occasionally Trippier and um, Davis. Would, they, they would be rotated. Dyer and um, Dembele. That that would pick itself. Um, and then you had uh, Ericsson. It was Delhi's first season. And it tended to be where he sort of changed it. It tended to either be Lamella or Son um, as the other player. And then Kane up front. And that, that was it. Um, yeah, we had a few other players in the squad at that point. Chadley and and Tom Carroll. Uh, um, uh, uh, Andros Townsend at the beginning of that season. And, and, then, and then we sold him on. Um, but it was pretty much... That was that was that was the team. You you knew what you were going to get, and unfortunately, the last couple of seasons we've had a lot of injuries. We've had Kane in in and out of the team at various points um, with, with ankle injuries. Um, we had an injury, obviously the injury to Toby last season. We had the injury to Danny Rose. Um, uh, when the arm has been in and out, we said Dembele. And this season, Ericsson, suddenly and, and Delhi players who, who who never got injured in the past. So I think that's. That means that we haven't been able to pick our best eleven, whatever that is, um, on a consistent basis. Um, is that a problem? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's disruptive if if you if you're constantly having to for- make changes. I think it's one thing if Pochettino is making changes for tactical reasons or for rotation through through choice and I, I suspect if he, if it was through choice he wouldn't make that many changes but often I think a lot of it, a lot of the time his hands hands been been forced and he's had to make changes because of because of injuries um hopefully now we're in a position where um Ericsson and Dan Ballet have returned for, for or seem to be back now Aria was obviously on the bench yesterday um Delhi I think he's going to be back in training soon so hopefully that should be all of our outfield players available Although I know Wanyama got a knock for Kenya mm. in the middle of the week. That's, um, right. That's right. Okay, but then, Jeff, answer me this question. Mm-hmm. Who would your top 11 be? Who would be my top 11? Okay. Who would be? No, no, no. Uh, I want your top 11. No substitutes, top 11. If, if we were playing Man City next week, Monday, which we are, and everybody yep. was fit, who would be your first 11? Everybody fit and everybody on form? Everybody, yes. Okay, um, I would play Hugo in goal. Mm-hmm. I would play a back four um, of Alderweireld and Vertonghen. Okay, but this mm-hmm. is assuming Vertonghen is the, which yeah. is not. Yep. Um, my full backs would be. I think the right back at the moment picks itself. It would be. It would be Trippier. Mm-hmm. Um, the left back I'm struggling with. In the past, a few seasons ago, I would have said Danny Rose. I would have said last season and the season before, hands down, uh, Ben Davis. Um, I think Rose is now starting to show some some of his old form, um, so I, I don't know who I would go for there. Probably Danny Rose. Okay, um, so that would be my, my back four. Um, the midfield I would go for Eric Dyer um, because he's well, he's based on this on his current form, and I think that he thought he can also slot and play into a back three. So if we decided to change the formation in the middle of the game, he could drop back from midfield and and um, slot in between to Alderweireld and Vertonghen. So we could switch to the back three within within the within the, within a match. We can tactically do that. So Dyer would be in midfield alongside uh, Winks. I'd probably say I'd actually choose Winks over Dembele. Because I, I think Dembele can't do it on a consistent basis. Um, the other players I would pick would be Ericsson, without a doubt. Deli Ali, without a doubt. Um, this one's a bit tricky. Um, I would probably go for Lamella, and I'd go for mm-hmm. Kane up front. Um, and you, you said don't name subs. Um, I won't, but obviously <laughs> that that assumes that. Therefore, my team means that there's going to be the likes of Mora and Son who. Uh, fantastic don't get in. Who, who, yeah, who don't, who don't get in? Yeah, yeah. But hey, what what good bench options they would be? <laughs> and but you, that, that's David? What... Uh, yeah, I, I was writing actually rather fast there. I sorry, down... oh, sorry, sorry, oh, no. Jeb, I that's right, I got Lord... off there. I'm that's done. Right. I, I, okay. I put Loris in. Trips and Rose as fullbacks. Toby and Ver. 
but um, for Tongan as the centre back, I think that's fairly easy. I would start with Dembele these days. Um, I, I still think he's the most powerful if he's on song. Ericsson and Dyer, and then Ali, Kane, and Son. So I know I'm leaving out Mora at the moment, and I'm leaving out Lamella, particularly, and, and Winks. Uh, I, 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 two, as uh, with say, Dembele and Winks are close, but just at the moment, the power of that um, would outweigh, I think. Um, but it, it, I, I can't get away from the fact that I am thinking of subs and thinking who could come on and be more of an impact sub as well. Um, so but that was in my mind, but choosing that 11. Before okay, I throw... So, so- Sorry, Jet. I was just going to add. So, so we've we've got effectively, if I've done them for the maths correctly, David and I have got nine of the same players in, in the starting yeah. eleven. So, uh, I think he went for Dembele over Winks and Son over Lamella. And correct. correct yeah. yeah. Right, Nikki, over to you. Okay. So, so just looking at that now. Um, who would you guys say, or where would you say, is our weak link, very weak link, if one of those players get injured? Ericsson. Yeah, 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 he's our general. He's the yeah. game maker. Yeah, he's a creative guy. We've, and... we've missed him. Yeah. We need him. That, that said, I think that, that Lamella probably is the next closest we have to Ericsson, but he's a d- different sort of player. Um, but, but, but if you had to go out and buy somebody, who have you seen? Because, you know, I don't, I don't watch a lot of other games. You know, I don't, I, I don't have the time. But, Messi. Okay, but we're never going to get Messi. <laughs> no. Who else have you seen that, that you would reckon would be a good sub for, for Ericsson? Have you? Because if not, we're going to have to start cloning him. <laughs> I think that, I think the the the, 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 tr- the trouble is if you get I'm just going to throw a name out of there. Let, 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 forget about whether it's practical or not. Let's just say yeah. Messi, Messi or Hazard or Coutinho, somebody like that. And I'm not going to get into which one would start over Ericsson, but if you get any one of those players or those sort of players, quite apart from the fact that a they're not available, b they cost shitloads of money, c their wages shitloads um, of money it, it'd be very difficult trying to accommodate them in, in, into the team so we'd almost have to go and find somebody like um, the guy at Leicester who David mentioned a few weeks ago Madison oh, oh yes yes who's not on the same level as Ericsson but somebody who could come in a younger understudy perhaps mm. and Marcus Edwards whatever happened to him no, he's still around. He's still around. Yeah, still around. Uh, yeah, loaned out to a club in Holland. Um, yeah, I honestly don't think. I think we'd 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 suffer from the same situation we we are with Kane, where we we're not we're not about to go and buy a top striker because no top striker wants to play second fiddle to Harry Kane, and I don't think anybody no. would, 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 would you know. I would go out and get Luka Modric. A Luka Modric for the next couple of years could do so much for us if we didn't have Ericsson. If you wanted to, if if you want to ignore the money aspect of it, he's he's the only one I can think of that that would replace Ericsson doing the same sort of job. He could yeah. also play. He could, could also play the two of them together, arguably. Oh, you probably could. You know, yeah, if there's a question, well, question of, if it's a question of accommodating. Um, and not upsetting what you could play Ericsson yeah. in a sort of 10 role and Modric in a 8 mm. you could probably get away playing Modric behind Ericsson but you, you're not careful you'll end up with a with a situation you have with England with uh, Lampard and uh, Gerrard yeah. where it just didn't seem to work in the end um, Mickey do you want to have a go and come up with your best 11 <laughs> Well, actually, I mean, it, it's really a combination of both of yours. But I, I think I would probably choose, I, I would go with David. I agree with Dembele, and, um, except I would go with Lamela and not Son. Hmm. So I think I've got 10 of each of your players. Yeah, that's good. I, I think, but, but I think that, you know, do we have a best 11? Perhaps not. Not, not. Maybe not one that everybody can 
every fan, if you ask every fan, they'll, they'll all come up with, with, with different opinions. But um, uh, and even Pochettino, at any given point in time, he might he might decide to pick Lamella over Son for a particular game, or Son over L- Lamella. Um, but I, we certainly, I think we've got probably a pool of maybe. 12, 13 players that we've all um, chosen. Um, there were some slight differences um, between mine and David's answers, but um, I, I, I don't think that's the issue, though. I think the, bit, the bigger issue is the fact that we've just been blighted by injury problems the last couple of years, and that's meant that we've it's been very seldom that we've been able to pick that best 11 whatever it is um you know whether we can debate about whether it's son or lamella or mora which one of those should start um or whether it should be even sanchez at the back maybe or, or yeah. which of the four backs should start. Instead of yeah Bayer. absolutely yeah or winks instead of lamella i think the, the, the problem is, is has been the injuries and that's that's forced pochettino's hand rather than anything i think if we didn't have those injuries i think that we would have strong squad of players to choose from suddenly our bench looks a lot stronger than it has done in the last few weeks and and Pochettino would would, would then choose players on merit and form um, rather than have to be forced to make decisions and and yeah at that point I think we'd we'd have a consistent nine or ten players that would start regularly for the club um, with the occasional rotating of fullbacks Um, Anyway, we shall see what the um, the first eleven will be um, a week tomorrow against Manchester City. Um, the next podcast um, we will be recording the day after, so that will be a week Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Um, my guests are still to be confirmed. Um, until then, thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Thank you, David. Yeah, thanks. Pleasure as always. And until next time, the future's bright. The future's lily white. Good night. Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the pace so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its load of nights. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out all the hurt.